not about, you're saying to me, telling me the story of baby Jesus, you haven't got a clue yourself. It's not about that. It's about, like you say, eating chocolates. Same as Easter is for fat people with chocolate. <laughs> I love Easter. No, you don't. You like eggs. You like chocolate, you fat little... Do you know what I mean? So, we don't need it. Maybe back then, when you were, you know, wise men knocking about a desert, they needed something to look forward to. They probably didn't live that long. I don't think they were looking forward to Easter, though, were they? No, but listen. Know, but, but Jesus you, certainly wasn't you had looking nothing. forward to Easter. Back then, when you watched Scrooge, yeah. everyone's looking forward to it. Tiny Tim, go and get a chicken. <laughs> now, these days, have a chicken when you want. Anyone can afford it. So it, doesn't, it hasn't got the same values. <laughs> Tiny Tim, go and get a chicken. Oh. Uh, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Is that how it works? Oh. oh no, what I'm, do you mean? What's the question? Well, I don't know. Uh, do you hear so many other things that you have to go through other gates? I can't imagine him being on the door, is what I'm saying. <laughs> if he owns a place, what's he doing there? He could put well, anyone on it. It's St Peter, isn't it, who's normally minding the gates, famously. Right, so it's him asking me. OK, well, let's say it's St no, Peter. No, 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 you go through the gate, Peter goes, oh, you're expected, um, he's got an appointment, we're going through the guard, go through a few doors, go up top floor, right, past the executive washroom, into his big office, OK, that overlooks the universe. So what, what? So you've gone in to see God, it's an audience with God, you've died, you've gone to heaven, mm. and what would you like God to say to you at that point? Um, probably just, just say, oh, um, you've done well in that in your life. You never did anybody any harm. So, welcome to the, to heaven. Any problems, give us a shout. Um, you know, here's a little layout of, of like a, you know, like a little map. It's kind of like... I love this. This is a great answer. And my favourite one is you never did anyone any harm. That's, that's great. That's a brilliant thing for God to say. Yeah. So, hang on, he's giving you a little map. So, he's giving you a little map of the a area. It's big. He'll sort of say, this is where you go for this, this is where you go for that. Um, I'd, I'd probably ask him about the ghost situation. I'd say, am I now a ghost then? Or is this just like another pl planet that I've come onto? Right. Uh, I don't know if he'd answer that. I don't know if he'd be sort of a bit... A bit cagey? Yeah. A little bit like, well, I don't want to panic you and stuff. Um, I'd say, right, is it right that I can see past family and that? Because, to be honest, I'd probably prefer to stay away. <laughs> No, but oh, the, because the thing is, if you've done all, I've done all that in this life, so it's about moving on to another life and meeting different people, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Otherwise, what's the point? It's just yeah. like the same all over again, but everywhere's white. I mean, I don't know if it is like Do this. you think I'm God just... would like this podcast? Um, uh, well, I suppose it just kills half an hour, doesn't it? Well, yeah, but time's not a problem for him, is it? Yeah, it is, because he lives for ages, so he needs loads of filler. I bet he's, you know, doing stuff that he's just like, I'm not really into this, but it's something to do, isn't it? <laughs> Sudoku and stuff. <laughs> But I think there'll be just as many problems up there as there is here, because at least people are leaving here, whereas up there, that's the thing that I'd be worried about the most, actually, that it's really crowded. Because <laughs> it's years and years of dead people, isn't it? <laughs> London does me head in. Up there, it's going to be well busier than that. I was talking to Carl the other night, because um, I'd been watching, re-watching for some reason, that film Witness with Harrison Ford, where he's a film. policeman that um, has to protect a little boy who's part of an Amish community. Amish? Amish. Amish. Yeah. And I tried to explain to Carl... You, are, you look plain, John Book. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, I was obviously trying to explain the Amish to Carl. Uh, he'd never heard of them. Completely stony-faced. Amazing. Used. Um, now, for those... OK, you've explained it to him, have yeah. you? OK, then. <laughs> Now, I don't know what you said, but I'm assuming you got it right, right? Carl, now tell me, tell me back now, what are the Amish? Um, they're just, just people who, um, sort of live, uh, like in the olden times. So to them, they're sort of in about 1842 or something, so they're getting old papers and that. Um, they haven't no, caught up no, to... No, 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 no. They, haven't cut, they, they, don't, they don't have telly. They don't they deny, don't... they don't deny the twentieth century has happened. They just don't want to be part of it. They, they they look up and they see planes and they know what they are and they go into the town and they see in those window of Dixons a telly. They just they just don't want to be part of it. No, they're they're still living. They still they are still living like it's yeah yeah that's, uh, that's, eight, what, that's what I mean yeah yeah but they don't they they know they know about everything else. They just don't want to be part of it because they think that the sort of the uh, uh, revolution um, was a bad thing. 
they think it, you know that society became more and more depraved, and they wanted to go away from it, and they want to go back to old values, and they think they don't need TV and 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 jets in that way of life. They can they can survive in the old way because the old way was better. Missing out on Live Eight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but they haven't had band aid yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think this is the problem that Carl had. He, he, in his mind, they were just a bit delayed, so yeah. that in his head they were slowly moving towards the. They wouldn't be century. able to watch most of these bands. All their electric guitar. They could. They, they'd be allowed to watch Tracy Chapman. Yeah, doing an acoustic set. Yeah, between yeah. the bands. Yeah, yeah. that would be all right. They'd but no, in a... Carl's mind, it's like if he. Although if they... they wouldn't like Fast Car. They wouldn't <laughs> like a scene about that. They go, "I don't know what you're talking about." Pony and trap. You got a pony and trap. <laughs> That'll be all right. But but are they still? Do they still get sort of rubbish post and that saying we need your money for this or you no, know get behind this charity? They live in a isolated community. They live, they're farmers, aren't they? They're farmers. It's so. an agricultural community, and they're obviously very staunchly religious. Um, and that, in actual fact, it would suit you very well because you hate crowds, you hate groups of people, you don't like the modern world. Well, you'd love it down there, wouldn't he you? He wouldn't like getting up at four o'clock to milk a cow, though, would he? Well, no, but he'd get mm. used to it. Go back to bed, can you? It's probably out. I mean, have they got anything to do with the the Hare Krishna people? No, no, nothing at all. Because out of all all the religions, that's you know, I'm not a religious person. I, I don't I don't understand. You're it. only saying Hare Krishna because you've got the head. That's the only reason no, you think it. I'm be... halfway there. Yeah. But, but the thing <laughs> is. Out of out of all, you just what's what, what was that? <laughs> Money just fell out of my pocket. Where I'm, I'm nearly laying down. <laughs> That's the danger of wearing sweatpants <laughs> everywhere you go. I'm nearly ever lying down in a chair. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm I'm you know I've never been a religious type. You know, if people oh. want to do it, I let them do it and what have you. Good of you. But out of all of them, mm. the I, I want one that's not going to take over your life. I don't want one where you've got to get up three times a day and you've got to go and pray and that you've got to get up early. Forget that. It's yeah. getting in the way. But if it's something like, um, I was walking to work the other day, right, across Oxford Street, mm. um, there's a little Harry Krishna fella there, and, uh, he sort of had, uh, he had a leaflet and stuff, and, uh, he said, you know, are you interested? And I said, what do you do? And, uh, he said, well, you know, we're against getting stressed out and what have you. And, um, he gave me a plum. <laughs> they hand out food for some reason. <laughs> but, um, I sort of asked a few questions. <laughs> that was the imagery. Yeah. These two bold people, one yeah. of which is wearing an orange smock, Holding a plum in the middle. He hands the other one a, pl pl a plum. It's almost, it's almost like you can imagine some kind of religious painting. <laughs> yeah, almost... exactly, yeah, yeah. But, but uh, you know, what, what is their sort of main thing, because he didn't really tell me that much. He was a, a Japanese bloke, so I didn't know what, what he was saying that, that much. Why? He well, wasn't speaking um, English? Not, not very well. He wasn't the best sales bloke to send out for them, <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. But what, what's that? Are they, you're saying they're nothing like... Well, I believe Hare Krishna is a, is a kind of, um, as an offshoot of a sort of Buddhist faith. It is, and, I think um, they are Buddhist, aren't they? Yeah, and obviously, the, obviously their most, their, their kind of trademark, as it were, is that they have to say, I believe they have to say Hare Krishna, Hare, Hare Krishna, in a certain rhythm, in a certain order, a certain amount of times per day. That's why you see them walking down the street saying Hare Krishna, Hare, Hare Krishna, because it's actually a, a sort of religious chant which they're obliged to do. So, you see, even if you go into the Hare Krishna faith, you may find yourself, you know, in Tesco or whatever, forced to say Hare Krishna, Hare Hare Krishna, perhaps out, why? Out loud, out, out not loud. just thinking it. Yeah, no, no, out loud. You can put it on an iPod and You couldn't listen. put it on an iPod, no, it doesn't count, no, I think you have to actually say it. So I guess that kind of eats into your, into your social life a little bit. And then, the, and there's, there's the wearing orange as well. Particularly frustrating, I imagine if you're in a, in a cinema or a library, a little bit awkward there, you know, midway through, um, or Star Wars, you live next it? door to a bloke called Harry Krishna, <laughs> yeah. who constantly thinks you're calling him. <laughs> yeah, that, that probably. Yeah. Mm. So that's that's in this. I mean, I don't think we've quite done the the uh, Harry Krishna faith. It's full service there. But uh, so interesting to you. I mean, you, you you got handed a plum. You've been treated well by them. Yeah, well, but he couldn't tell. I, I just wanted to know how much time it would take up. Uh, what are the benefits? Mm. Um, you know, what can you? What can well, I think do? the benefits are they probably don't get stressed out. They've probably got that sort of that that zen, that that that, that chiness about them, where they they try and interact and quite meditative. Yeah. Yeah. I've oh, got nice. some nice trainers as well, don't they? With their yeah their orange. What are you there. looking for then in a faith, Carl? You say you it, it's, what are the benefits? I mean, obviously Catholicism, you get the communion wine and um, bread. So yeah, but I can afford that. Right. Um, <laughs> probably. Uh, just, just, 
I liked the Crusaders. I was forced into joining that as a kid because a mate sort of joined it, and uh, he sort of said, "Are you joining?" I, I sort of swore at him. I said, "I'm not doing that." Right? Yeah. He said, "Right, if you don't come with me, I'll uh, I'll tell your mum that you just swore." <laughs> so I was like, "Oh." So, so I went, <laughs> so I went along and they used to just go on the Friday when they played, you know, Sabutio and stuff and then I went on one Sunday and it was, it was totally different. There was no Sabutio, there was no sort of, you know, uh... Table tennis? Uh, the thing where you hold a, a thing and knock things over. Skittles. Uh, Skittles. There was all that on a Friday. Went on the Sunday, it was rubbish. <laughs> they said, right, sit down in this room, they gave me a Bible. I thought, this looks too heavy, this, this is too big, I'm not interested in this, but... And, uh, I never went again, I used to hide on a Sunday when they came round. And, um, <laughs> that, that's, that's been the only Sunday... <laughs> I, did that. I suddenly, why did it suddenly turn out to have to hide on a Sunday <laughs> when they're coming round? Because they wouldn't, they wouldn't leave, they wouldn't leave... Who the, was the it, house. were they adults? It was a, yeah, sort of a... Well, he seemed like an adult to me at the time, but he was probably about 27. Like well, that, that is an adult. Yeah, but, do you know what I mean, he seemed a lot older when I was a kid. Yeah. And he came knocking and that, and he used to say to me, Mum, I'll just tell him I'm ill or something. And, uh, he used to hang around to see if, I, if I'd eventually come out to play and that. And if I did, I think they would've grabbed me and, and took me there. I love the idea that you want, that for you religion has to pr bring with it some kind of gift. It's like, you know, join our faith and you get an alarm clock radio. It's but, like something but like... I think religion, but I think religion does bring a gift, usually. Mm -hmm. It's well, the, the gift of the Lord. W well, the gift of everlasting life, isn't yeah. it? And that's the problem with it, you know. A lot of people believe in it because they think... But the, for Carl, oh, right. he's f his feeling is like, that should be a given. That's safe. I'm definitely going home with eternal life. But yeah. what else can I have? Is there no, an iPod? Do you have to have it? a religion? Because I, obviously I don't have a religion. I don't miss it and I wouldn't want one. I'm an atheist. And that, that's, out of, that's out of belief. That's out of logic. And we don't get into the, the politics or the, yeah. the morality of it. Why do you, why do you feel you need a religion? Why don't you just get a hobby? Well, I, I didn't want one. I don't want one. I just was saying that, you know, if I was to get one, which one would I go for? <laughs> is what I'm saying. Mm. I'd like I mean? to see you, perhaps as a Jew. I think a, 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 Judaism would suit you well, I think. What are the hours like for that? Tough. It can be tricky. That's what I mean. I don't want anything <laughs> that's, you know... And they, they have a day where they don't eat and stuff. I couldn't be doing that. <laughs> So well, they have days when they eat a lot too much. Yeah, but what happens if I'm not that hungry that day? <laughs> like I say, I don't like change. No. I mean, I like my Cheerios in the morning. <laughs> I don't, I don't... Carl, you've studied the Bible over the last couple of days. Well. And you're going to give us a, a, basically the Bible abridged, is that right? Just uh, condensed? Um, um, just, just that, you know, it's that time of the year when religion... Well, let's do no a save it. Let's, let's do a sermon. Everyone, everyone settled, uh, settled down at home. Turn the radio up. This is um, Reverend Carl Pilkington with uh, the history of the Bible. All right, thank you very much. Right, well, uh, thanks for coming. Um, starting off, you know, I mean, I've, I started off at the at the beginning of the of the book. What have you? The Bible. We'll call it for the sake of argument. All right. <laughs> um, there's quite a bit missing. It doesn't it doesn't say about how sort of God was already about. So it doesn't go right back to the beginning. Um, <laughs> right, okay. God, God's already knocking about on that. Yep. Anyway, he made the world, right? He did, did all that, right? Yep. He sorted out, um, sort of sun for, for the, in the day and that, so everything's light and you can see yourself about. <laughs> right. He did the stars and the moon for at night, right? I was thinking about that. Uh, if I was him, I'd probably would have just let it be day all the time rather than having two systems. We're well, not criticising. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not okay. having a go, I'm just saying. I mean, it's easy now, isn't it, in hindsight, to sort of say, do you know what? <laughs> it's easy yeah. to really criticise him, but he was working... He's, slow, sort of, you know. he's sort of loosened the top, you just got it off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah sure, yeah, 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 he did a lot of the work, yeah, cheers. No, I'm just saying, though, yeah. like, they mess about with the clocks and that because of farmers getting up in the dark and that. If it was day all the time, less crime and that. I'm just saying that it, it might have been worth an idea. You, you missed a trick there, is what you're saying. But he yeah. moves in a mysterious way, so you don't know why he's done that. He might be, he oh might right. be thinking something that y your small brain can't really. Fair enough. Okay. I'm not having a go. Like I say, I'm just just reading it and thinking about it. That's what it's all about, isn't yeah, it? Education, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. thinking. Yeah, yeah right. go on. Anyway, so uh, he did all that. He made the sun and that, and then he said, "Oh, make some creatures and stuff." He made a load of birds, loads of different birds, creatures, animals, and that because. The, with the world being so big, it's like if you buy a big house, you need more furniture, don't you? Right. So he made this and he was like, oh, God, what am I going to fill it with? So this is why he, he did all these Right. Animals. That's not actually in the Bible, you no, speculated is... there on yeah. the mind of God. Well, I'm sort of just 
treating it like it, it's his big house, right? Isn't it? Okay. And he's filling it. He's making it look nice. Different birds and what have you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Just my opinion. Like it's making it sound like the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So anyway, right? So uh, he does all that, and uh, he thinks, right? I'll make a little man and a woman. Sure. Who we all know as like Adam and Eve. Yeah. Um, everyone knows their names, but at, at no point is is their surname mentioned. Right? <laughs> Well, he's not gonna have trouble with a post, right. is he? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, right, Adam and Eve are knocking about, uh, the god says to him, look, just enjoy yourselves and that, right? Um, do what you want, but I'll tell you this, I'm only telling you once, he said. He said, don't be eating fruit from that special tree. Yeah. So, they were like, alright, fair enough. He said, the tree that I'm talking about is the tree of knowledge. Yeah. So that's c sort of made it a little bit worse because it sounds good and that, and you're like, oh, knowledge. Yeah. Well, you know don't I mean? go in that door. Yeah. It's, it's exactly, that sort yeah. of thing. Instead of just sort of not telling them, because mm. I, I don't know. See, the, the tree of knowledge, what it had on it by what I can work out, is it's an apple tree, right? <clears throat> and it's pretty tempting, isn't it, to, to our little cheeky apple? Because I don't, I don't know what they were eating back then. Right. Do, do you know what they were, what, what they were getting by on? No, I don't know. Right. So anyway, so they were like, yeah, all right, whatever. Eve goes for a wander about, yeah. right? Killing time and that. <laughs> Bumps into this snake. Oh, yeah. And, uh, snake said, uh, you know, said, all right, you got an apple, right? And, uh, he was selling it, so he was going, it, it tastes good and that, right? And she's like, well, shouldn't really, but, you know, I've been told that I shouldn't eat that. Because I think God said to her at some point, um, oh, if, get on with it. You're on page one at the moment. This is absurd. This oh, is just get... unbelievable. No, but I'm just, just painting. Just get to the point. You're on page one. You yeah, haven't but... moved on. Just get, okay, we know Adam and Eve. What have you learned? Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying, he was saying don't eat it because it's yeah, dangerous. Yeah, I know, we know. Get on with it. Just get on with I mean, oh. But the thing is, people do eat things that are dangerous, don't they? Like, and puffer fish, even to this day, people are eating stuff that can kill them. Yeah. So it's not a threat. They're not. They're not that bothered. It's an apple, right? They're, they're gonna have a little cheeky apple. Anyway, they eat it, right? God goes mental at them. He said, "I told you not to do that. I've told you you can enjoy yourself and everything. You've, you've gone against what I said. Oh. You've eaten the apple." Adam and Eve sort of got told off and what have you. They went off and had kids. Um, that added extra pressure. A lot of arguments <laughs> happened, and uh, that's that's kind of part one. <laughs> That is amazing. That is amazing. So, oh, you're an idiot. Really, you are an idiot. Well, part two later then. Get on with it! I'm just saying. Oh. So the kids didn't listen to the mum and dad because they, they had a criminal record and that for nicking the apple. The kids were <laughs> running riot. They're not bothered. <laughs> so, let's pick up. I'd like to apologise there. I, I'm just going to say, it really isn't worth complaining. He doesn't know what he He'd get off. In a court yeah. of law, he'd get off. He's got, I don't know, uh, it, it, he wouldn't be culpable right. for his own actions. Come on, I, I, even I'm getting bored of this now. Okay. Right, so, God, he got to a point where he's going, it's all going wrong, right? People are doing what they want. Adam and Eve aren't listening. All the rest of it. No, 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 he gave them free will. I've got so to do the story something. goes. Please, oh, please. this is making me So, Ill. anyway, right, so he said, how can I, how can I get rid of all the badness and that? So, he made it rain, right? It rained for ages. People got sick of the rain and that, right? <laughs> Cleaned it all out, right? Uh, before he did that, though, I forgot something that's quite important. He met up with this bloke, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> They met up over a coffee. Yeah, right. yeah. And he said to Noah, look. <laughs> Get uh, an umbrella. I like you and that. Here's a little job for you. All I'll uh, say is buy shares in galoshes. <laughs> yeah. We're no, I don't want to give anything away, but you'd get a boat. <laughs> yeah. And he get said, a big boat. He said, what I want you to do, right, make this boat up. He said, and when you've done that, go about, right, and get two <laughs> of everything. <laughs> right. So. Man and like, female. That's a big job, isn't it? Right. Man and female. Yeah. Would you know, cos I was, do you know, I always say I always put myself in the situation of the person's job and that. Yeah. I was thinking I can do, I can sort of sort out a man elephant, man woman and that. I wouldn't know how to do it with a spider. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know why you brought on spiders. I do not know why now I brought on spiders. Cos uh, he missed an opportunity there. Get rid of all things like that. Yeah. Get rid of the spider and, you know, I've, I'm get, get four, you know, flamingos or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Get, get, get eight chimps. Let's, let's use the space wisely. But, but the weird thing is, right, with the spiders as well, cos he did get the spiders on, didn't he? It rained, right? It rained for ages, like, uh, what was it, weeks, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Raining and that. So, uh, <laughs> and then he let out a, uh, a bird, I think it was a raven. No, right. it wasn't. Right, come on, let him finish. No, it wasn't a, a raven. Let him this is, a, this okay. is a fact. He let a raven out, right, and he didn't come back. 
So already his system had broken because he, oh, oh, he only okay. had one raven left then, right? So he was like, oh. So <laughs> he said, right. He left it a couple of days. He sent a dove out. Oh, that's it. That's what I know. You've been more than me. I say. Yeah, so oh, he did, is that what he did? He let yeah. a raven out first. first yeah. Yeah. And then never the trust a raven. Always give it to the dove. Dove can don't, don't send a raven to do a dove's oh, job. I reckon the raven found another ark, an unofficial <laughs> ark that was just like a party oh, ark. Okay. No, no, come on, the, no, uh, come on. Right. So the dove came back. Yeah. So he said, right, there must be dry land somewhere. Right? Okay. So anyway, he was like, let's just hang about. Why do you think that? Uh, cause he found a twig or something. Exactly. Say what you- why could that be the top of a tree though? Why could it- how did he know that? Rick, know. if you aren't gonna add to this, uh, we're never gonna get it done. Okay, I'm sorry. Right, so there was mud everywhere, because the water went down. Mud everywhere. Where did that. the water go? Shut up, why'd you well, stop? Where did it go? Just shut up, we haven't got time to go into that! It doesn't make sense! If the whole world was flooded, where did the water go? We have not go? got time for this. Where did the water go? This is mental. Did they refreeze the ice caps? What? Tell me, is it- uh, it got to be- Didn't specific. it say it was a kid's bible, wasn't it? It wasn't going in depth. It just said the water went away, right? Where? It floated off. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't be bothered. Just do the final, uh, uh um, I suppose, uh, what would you call this? Um, summing up with the Bible, then we do a, a longer one. Well, no, it's not, it's not sort of summed up. Because, uh, to be honest, after the Noah bit and stuff, I was a bit like, oh, this Oh, just do it. Just do it. Heavy, okay, so this, is, this is the final, on. this is the final episode of the Bible. Well, the greatest the, story ever told. No, no, but it's not the final chapter. This is just another bit in it that I thought you I can didn't relate even to. Get to the you end. didn't, you couldn't even read a children's Bible. They had to go to Waterstones and ask two people for it, and they put it in yeah, a brown paper it was, bag. It's 200 and odd pages and that. Oh. So, the one that I picked up on, right, that I could relate to. Okay. Do you know, um, Samson Delilah? Yeah, of course. Do you know what happened in that? Yes. Right, well, just in case you haven't heard the story of Samson and Delilah, what it is, um, t some, I think God had a word with, uh, <laughs> some bloke, I can't remember his name, I think it's Manoah or something his name was. Right. He said, listen, I'm still having problems, uh, Adam and Eve let me down. Um, he didn't say that, by the way. Anyone listening, at no point has God ever said, Adam and Eve let me down. No, anyway. but, and then he had a word with Noah, he, he did the, the boat thing, so he said, I can't ask for two favours, right? Sure. So he, he asked this other bloke, <laughs> Manoah. He, he was happy said, with Noah, though, was he? Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he let him go on, though. It's like jury service. Once you've done it, you're left alone for a bit, aren't you? <laughs> so anyway, did he, right, so he didn't bother getting the fish on the boat, did he? I, c I don't know. They were happy, weren't they? Surely. But anyway, yeah. Although, was it salt water everywhere? Why didn't the, why didn't the freshwater fish die out? Rick, I'm just gonna stop you there because we've still got to get monkey news in before one uh, one o'clock. So, so he, he had a word okay. with this this fella, and he said uh, he said, "Look, what I'm gonna do? You're gonna have a kid soon. It's gonna be a little boy, right? And when he grows up, he's gonna sort out any problems." So it was like a, a long term plan that sure. he had sorted, <laughs> right? So anyway, they have the kid, right? They're happy. We've got a little baby boy. They go right. What we'll do to show our respect to God? We'll never cut his hair, right? Because <laughs> he'll like that. Right. We're still so, in the Old Testament, aren't we? I don't think Jesus is going to make an appearance. Oh, so so they called him Samson. Yeah. Right. And uh, he grew up. Right. Never cut his hair. Yeah. Um, his hair made him strong. Right. He was going about. He was helping people out. He was stopping wars and that because he was so strong. His hair made him strong and that apparently. Yeah. Anyway, nobody knew that. Nobody knew it was his hair that did the job. So uh, this is right so far, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs. So anyway, what happened is women are loving him all of a sudden. He's got nice long hair and that. He looks the part. <laughs> he's stopping problems. Women are going. He's a good fellow, isn't he? This Samson bloke, like string fellow. Anyway, <laughs> that, that's, <laughs> it, that's his, the power of pulling. Is in <laughs> string fellow's hair. <laughs> yeah. That's why he never cuts it. Exactly. Whatever, whatever the decade. <laughs> yeah. Peter Stringfellow <laughs> never cuts his hair because that's where the power <laughs> lies. <laughs> anyway, he didn't realise he had this power until one day he got up, right, did his hair and that, went out. Uh, a lion jumped out. Oh, he he he, he killed it with yeah. his hands, with his bare hands. Why? Right. So again, Noah was a bit annoyed because that's one of the ones that he, that he <laughs> saved. saved. <laughs> but anyway, right. So he goes, I can't believe this power I've got. Right. <clears throat> I'm gonna like sort out the world. Didn't problems. the lion have long hair though as well? Uh, well, no. We'll just just what? No, but uh, you're always picking on the. the uh, to be honest though, that's that's as far as I got. Anyway. <laughs> so. Okay, Carl. This is a a a a. a a logical, um, uh, conundrum. Um, to a certain extent, there's a little bit of lateral thinking because, uh, but there is only one right answer. Um, now, the pressure here isn't to get this right, because I don't know anyone who's ever got this right. The pressure is, one, are, are asking sensible questions, okay. and when I've told you the answer, to then understand it. Because I've still, have, when I've explained this to people, I've laid out for them, they still can't quite get the concept. Um, okay, so, there's two doors, Carl. Yeah. One leads to heaven, right. one leads to hell. Yeah. Okay, they're identical, you can't tell them apart, okay? 50-50. Right. Obviously you want to go to heaven, I assume. 
Right, okay. there's two guards, identical guards, guarding each door, okay? Right. The one guarding hell always tells a lie. The one guarding heaven always tells the truth. You have to ask one question to find out which, which is which, and then go through the door you want. What question do you ask? I've only got one. Yeah. And what, one to, to both? No, one to either of them. You don't know which one's which, though. So what question do you ask? Why can't I ask, like, both of them one? Because it's because not the, the rules. rules are you can only ask one. There aren't actually two doors labelled heaven and hell, Carl. That's it's a leap of imagination here. And I, I've, I've, I've definitely got to answer. I've got to ask them a question. I can't just sort of have a feel of the door to see <laughs> if there's any heat or anything. <laughs> <laughs> they're identical. You stand a few yards away. You cannot tell from the outside of these doors which is which. They're identical. The guards are identical. But the one guarding hell always tells a lie, and the one guarding heaven always tells the truth. What question do you ask? I can't look through the keyhole or anything. There's no keyhole. near them. Um, Let's imagine there's a small rope that prevents you from getting anywhere near, rather like outside a nightclub. Yeah. What do you ask? What do you ask? What question do you ask? Come on, you've only got one. Quick, this is it. So, they stood there. Yeah. They both look the same. They're both smiling. Yeah. But one of them's not really smiling, really. He's trying to make me make a mistake, isn't he? Well, he's just going to lie when you ask him a question, if you ask him. So what's the point in asking a question? Do I know one of them's going to lie? Yeah, well, you want, the one guarding hell always tells a lie, the one guarding heaven always tells the truth. These these things you know. But would they be neighbours like this? Would they be that <laughs> close? <laughs> Why? <have> <laughs> I mean, we're not sure if these two guys get I'll on. I'll give you a clue. I'll give you a clue. They know who they are, and they know that the one guarding hell always tells a lie, and the one guarding heaven always tells the truth. So I know that. No, they know it as well. It doesn't really come down to this, Carl. This isn't what's going to happen when you die. But when is this useful, then? Because it's a logical... Well, I'll tell you the answer. No, 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 I want to see if he can get it. He's almost there. Uh. No, he's not almost there. What am I thinking? But there's, there, there's no shame in not getting it. It's there's no shame one. in not yeah. getting it. It's a really hard one to get. The, what, what, I mean, the shame is the ridiculous questions you asked. Um, and now I'm going to tell you the answer. No, hang on, right, so you go up and you yeah. go, um... You right, go. hang on, well, look, let's, let's imagine that, let's imagine Ricky and I are those two guys, okay? Right? But we have to, um, uh, uh, well, me and, me and Steve are decide which doors we're guarding, okay? Right. Uh, I'm, uh... Look, look away, Carl. Okay, All right, then. so we've decided, okay, one of us is guarding hell and one of us is guarding heaven. Which question are you going to ask and who are you going to ask it to? Right, um, I'll just say to you, Steve, I'll go, uh, uh, got some, uh, got some post for God here. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a question. That's a statement. Right, you've got some post for God here. No, that's not a question. Yeah, but maybe All the right, question's uh, coming. I got, you got some post for God here, yeah. Uh... And it needs to be signed. It's, it's not a, a question. Still not a question. No, let so him finish. Is, me. is God in? Because I need him to sign for this post. Is he in? Well, I can answer that as well if you want. Go on. He, he's, yeah, he's in. He's behind my door. Do you want to answer it? Well, yes. Do you, want, do you want to get him? Just. Uh... Well, no, you've only got one question. So you're, you're asking Steve, is God in? What's the answer? Yes. You ask me. Yes. Look, lads, I'm just trying to do a job here. Um, <laughs> what am I going to do with this? Well, give it to me and I'll give it to God because he's behind my door. Steve? Yeah, give it to me and I'll take it into God because he's behind my door. You're an idiot. It doesn't help. That doesn't help. But let me tell you the answer. You ask either one of us, you say, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? Then whatever they say is the door they're guarding. Because if you happen to ask the one guarding hell, right? So I'm guarding hell, by the way. I'm the devil. Steve's God, okay? So you ask me what, what Steve would say if you asked him what door he was guarding, and I'm going to lie. I know he'd say heaven, because he'd tell the truth, but I'm lying, so I'd say he'd say hell. So you know I'm guarding hell. 
you asked Steve what door I was guarding, he'd tell the truth, right? So he'd say, he'd say heaven because he'd know I'd lie. So he's guarding heaven. So the, the, uh, the question is, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? And whatever the person answers is the door they're guarding. Steve, what door are you, are you looking after? Well, heaven. Yeah. Why should I believe you? Because you don't know. No, that doesn't work. Because you ask me the same and I'd say heaven as well. Right, so who do I believe? This is where you use your gut feeling though, innit? This is what life's- <laughs> <laughs> well, As opposed to the pure logic that Ricky's just used. I just think, cos there's a lot of questions in life where you don't know the answer and you go, do you know what, I don't like the look of him. <laughs> so- They're I, identical. Yeah, but they're still identical twins. You always get a little snidey one. <laughs> to Christmas. Some people forget the true meaning of Christmas. I just think it's drinking and giving presents. But obviously it comes from the story of the, the nativity. Very briefly, what is the story of Christmas as you as you remember? It's baby Jesus was born. Is that it? Mm, okay. Let's let's can we expand on that a little? Um let's start the night before. What happened on Christmas Eve? She was, um, Mary was pregnant. Right. She's wandering about, um, you know, probably knowing it was due. Was she knocking about with the three fellas at that point? No. <laughs> no. Three fellas being... The wise men. No. She wasn't with them. No. Who was she with? I honestly don't know. What was her husband called? Her husband was... I don't know. I wasn't that interested in, in Ari. Jesus right. was born. Right, OK. Um, and Mary and Joseph, yeah? Yeah, yeah. They travelled, didn't they? On a donkey? Yeah. What happened? She's pregnant. Yeah, we've done that. And then she's like, I'm going to have this kid in a bit, sort somewhere out. Right. He says, she had, we're going to struggle. She came from Salford. It's Christmas oh. Eve. Right. Um, no. And they stayed at her. They no, stayed no, at no, her. no. It wasn't Christmas Eve, was it? All right, then it's just a normal day. Yeah. And they stayed. And they couldn't, find, it. They couldn't find anywhere. Right. So they stayed in a stable. Right. She had the kid on December 25th. Um, that's it. Then what happened? That's it. Really? No, it was the three fellas she was knocking about with at the beginning. The you wise men. Right. And uh, there was a star involved. They followed a star. Um, you see, you're making me look like a divvy, but it wasn't an important lesson at school. I wasn't. I'm not a Catholic or anything. I'm nothing. I'm sort of. My mum even said she said, "Don't tell anyone that you're not anything." She said because it's something about witches. When I was a kid. <laughs> When you're a kid, you're at risk of being taken away People by... People think he's a character. People think this is scripted. No. Imagine if I bothered writing this. But it's not important. You, you, it's, it's so not important, this story. What did your mum say about witches? No, she just said, don't go around telling people you're not christened or anything. Right. Um, I did a bit of... I did a Sunday school thing um, called Crusaders. Right. Joined that, but I just went on like the Friday when they had Sabutio table football, and then they came knocking on the Sunday saying, "Come on, you've got to come with us." Right. And I went, and it was rubbish. There was no Sabutio. There's an old fella reading out a smelly Bible, really old books, and I hated it. I said, "I'm not going on the Sunday again." So I used to just go on the Friday, and um, <laughs> yeah, mm. that 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 is religion for me. There you go. I didn't need it. I don't need an old story. Final thoughts. What does Christmas mean to you then, Carl? If you don't like old stories, what does Christmas mean to you? Just look, look down and tell people what they should be thinking of this Christmas. What does it mean to you? Um, it's hassle, isn't it, Christmas? Um, Got to buy presents. Uh, the meal's all right, the food's all right. It's the best, isn't it? If the roast dinner is the, uh, you know, the king of meals, surely the Christmas roast is the king of roasts. Yeah. Um, Christmas. I could do without it. If someone said, we're getting rid of it, I'd go, all right. 
I don't like all the build up. I don't like that bit in between Christmas and New Year when nothing's happening. That's a dead week. Nothing goes on. People are still off for Christmas. Christmas has happened. Get back to work. You can get nothing done. Everything comes to a standstill. Why do you like Christmas? Uh, I like being allowed to drink gin and tonic at 10 a.m. while watching Noah Ledman's give little sick kids presents. Well, that's what I mean. That's what it's about. It seems to be a big deal here, Easter, whereas at home it's just, you know, I said to him, I said, oh, do you have a chocolate egg? And he was like, what? He had no idea. You don't have chocolate eggs here. I mean, for me, that's what Easter is. Take the eggs away, it's, you know what I mean? It's Friday. Because he fell over. I think it's, it's part of the story. Somebody helps him. I don't know, do you know the Bible story? No, I don't know, but surely you wouldn't want someone helping him, would he? That's like saying, come on, I want to see you get crucified. You say, put it down, don't be helping me. It's the, it's the, it's the one time in your life where you don't want help. Just what you want, innit? Imagine that. Being Jesus, being taken, you know, your life's going to end, you've got someone with a recorder. <laughs> it's the worst sound going, isn't it? It's the worst instrument, that. I'd say do it here. Bloody <laughs> hell. I thought it was a proper accident before when he was walking up and he fell over. I thought it was a proper trip and it was, he's obviously hurt his leg up. But it does sort of ruin the whole sort of Jesus type image when, you know, someone from St John's Ambulance is sticking a bit of Savlon on his knee. You think they're gonna nail him? Not after, because they were so concerned about his knee, putting Savlon stuff on it. I don't think they'd do that and then say, right, give us your hands. <laughs> it'd be a bit, uh, be a bit extreme, They used it? to do it until 1984, they used to do it with nails. Here? Yeah. Well, what sort of a nail do you use for that? I always struggle. <laughs> Doing DIY, you just never, you never get it right. I do not know what sort would go through. Oh. Well, obviously, you know, all this means a lot to these people, doesn't it? Whereas I've, I've never seen anything like this at home. You know, at home, really, it's a sort of a... It's got religion linked to it, but really, it's just a time of the year for greedy people to feel like they're doing a bit of good. Oh, I love Jesus, me. Have you got any eggs? I mean, why is an egg even involved in it? I don't, I don't know the connection between Jesus and an egg. Because oh, he can't be happy with that, can he? If he was on his cross on his last breath and someone said, we're going to remember you, Jesus, and it was like, great, what are you going to do? We're going to have egg. You what? Uh, do you know what I mean? You wouldn't be chuffed with that. It's not like this at home, is it, Easter? You know, my Easter weekend, I'm normally sat watching James Bond or, you know, just nipping out to B&Q, stuff like that, but somehow I can't see that happening here.